My name is Amr Azim. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist at New York City IVF. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about uh, uh, IVF success rates and uh, how do you uh, uh, get around analyzing the numbers and uh, what would be uh, a mature and a modern thinking of uh, uh, the, the odds of success after uh, undergoing IVF. Uh, success after uh, in uh, getting pregnant and having a baby after IVF is related to uh, uh, t two main issues. Number one, biological issues related to uh, uh, the woman and her partner. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the second part is related to attention to details in conducting the cycle and the quality of the lab. Um, so uh, obviously younger women will get pregnant at uh, a higher rate than older women, generally speaking, so which speaks to uh, uh, in, in encouraging all women to uh, 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 attempt to conceive earlier uh, uh, than later if they can. Uh, and uh, uh, it's also related to uh, um, uh, uh, things like uh, the sperm quality uh, and uh, the ovarian reserve, the number of eggs uh, that remain inside the ovary. Once you've proceeded with IVF, the conduct of the cycle is very important in relation to attention to details during ovarian stimulation, uh, select the best stimulation protocol, and uh, uh, then um, um, uh, the quality of the lab in terms of culturing the embryos. Uh, and then the number of embryos to be transferred. Uh, in general, within the same age group, the more embryos you transfer, the, the chance for getting pregnant would increase. But so would the chance of multiple pregnancy also. So in, in uh, somebody who's less than 35, um, uh, if you transfer uh, two embryos, the chance of having a baby out of an IVF cycle is close to 50%. However, the chance of having twins in that same cycle is about 30%, so one third would be twins. Uh, the, the twins uh, are, uh, and, and higher order multiple pregnancies are more exposed to uh, uh, delivery before time, which can lead to short-term and long-term health hazards. Some of them are permanent. And uh, it, it is better for women to have their uh, uh, babies one at a time. And because of that came the, um, the, the push and the suggestion of single embryo transfer a few years ago. Uh, right now, uh, uh, few programs in the United States practice elective single embryo transfer, meaning you have two or more embryos and you elect to transfer only one and freeze the other embryo. Uh, if you transfer only one embryo, uh, uh, the chance of success will not be 50%, it will be close to 35 to 40% dependent on age. So obviously one can inflate the chance of getting pregnant uh, by placing more embryos at the expense of having multiple pregnancy. And you should take that in consideration uh, uh, when you decide an embryo transfer strategy. You would, if you transfer two embryos, you'll have higher success rate, but you'll have higher multiple pregnancy rate. And if you transfer one embryo while freeze the other embryo, you will realize the exact same success but spread over two months. So it, it is important not to look only at uh, uh, numbers, uh, just one number, the pregnancy rate, but you also have to look at the number of embryos being transferred and the number of, uh, uh, of pregnancies that are singleton as opposed to the number of embryos that are, uh, the number of pregnancies that are uh, twins or more uh, at a specific program. Uh, also, this should be a point of extensive discussion between you and your reproductive endocrinologist based on your value system and what you would accept. For example, accepting reduction if you have uh, twins or triplets. Thank you very much.